Hello, you are going away and you don't know what to pack. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips and advice to make sure you don't leave anything behind. Kevin. I will show you what to pack, must have items, clever space saving hacks, things to help you eat, sleep, drink. Let's get straight into it. And first of all, you're gonna to need to know how many people are actually going where you're gonna be going and what kind of things you're gonna be doing in the area which you're staying. If there's just two of you and you're stealth camping in the middle of Manchester, then it's gonna be completely different than if there's four of you gonna be going to the sunny towns of Devon and Cornwall. And if there are four of you going to one of these beach locations, then you probably will need more stuff than if you were going to one of the inner city destinations. You will more than likely need a drive away awning so you can actually store some of the goods which you've got which you want to leave on site when you're out on your day trips. You don't want to be carrying around all your equipment all the time. So having the drive away awning, you can just put your gear in there and drive away in an empty van. So you've got your awning and if you are sleeping in this, then you might need some extra bedding support, such as an, maybe an air bed, but also inside the vehicle itself, you mustn't forget that you need to be taking your Pandora mattress topper or your duvet if you do need that extra comfort not everybody likes to sleep on a solid surface. And with this, don't be forgetting your duvets, your pillows, your pillowcases, your bed sheets. For each guest which you've got, you don't want to be leaving anybody's pillow behind. It can cause a lot of arguments. Trust me, we have done it. Possibly in the summer, especially if you're coming to the sunnier climes of Devon and Cornwall, you might not need that big, thick, toggle duvet which you've got. Maybe just a thin sleeping bag would suffice, or even a passenger blanket, which I have spoken about in the past. These are great, versatile products, really, really good, and you can sleep in them. To stay comfortable in the hot weather, which we sometimes can get in this country, it's not always easy when you're in a metal box, but I did do a video of this last year, which you can have a look at. I'll link to that at the end. But one of the things which I did mention in this video to help cool is a windscreen cover. And this is one which I particularly use, and it's the Just Campers one, which is the thermal cover. And this is one of the external ones. And will it, with it actually being reflective, it does actually reflect the sun's rays away from the windscreen. And it is a really good product. I definitely, definitely recommend that. Now, more comfort things which you're gonna take are obviously gonna be your personal items. So anything which you need for your personal hygiene, some people use hair gel, other people don't, but make sure the products which you use, your deodorants, your face creams, and things like that, your small shower gels and conditioners, anything which you need as far as your personal hygiene is concerned, make sure you pack that away. Now, something which I've used for many, many years is this Life Venture bag. And I was thinking about this earlier, and I think I've probably had this for about 19 or 20 years. The mirror which you get in it is obviously long since gone, but the bag itself is still really, really useful. And I definitely recommend the Life Venture products. But something else which you are going to need to take if you are going to certain areas, and that is bug repellent. When you're out in the evenings and you're out around the, the grasses and the trees and bushes and things like that, there are going to be a lot of flying insects around and even ones in the grasses themselves. So having a bug repellent with you is really, really good thing to have. And additionally, if you are going to be going out in the summer, then obviously don't be forgetting your sun creams and your after sun lotions. You don't want to be leaving those behind and getting burnt. Yes, I do know you can easily get them from the shops, but isn't it easier to take goods which you've already got? And don't forget your towels. And this is something a lot of people do forget. Do not forget your towels. Whether you are going to the beach or not, you still are going to be needing for when you're having washes and showers and things like that. Now, again, Life Venture, the towels which I've got, I've had them for around the same kind of period. And they are still as good now as they were 19, 20 years ago. Really good products. And they do last a long time. And the next item you don't want to forget, and I know this is a little bit, not everybody wants to do it, but I've got the Thetford Porta Potty 335. Not everybody wants to carry a toilet with them. And not everybody actually needs one. Because if you're staying on a well-serviced site with all the amenities on there, then you might not be interested in taking your own toilet, whether it is a proper big toilet or a bog in a bag. But toilet roll, and I know a lot of people can be a little bit fussy about toilet roll, so just take some toilet roll. So if you do go to the toilet and there isn't any, then you know you've got your own. And also, if it's tracing paper, then you've got your own far better product. That stuff was awful. I'm sure you remember it. So getting towards the end of some of the comfort items, and that's thinking about the varying different weather conditions. Now, it might not always be a case of 
it's flip-flop weather, which let's hope it is if you're going away in the summer. You might more likely to be needing your, your welly boots. They they are definitely aren't mine. They're quite small. But just think about the very different weather conditions, and that also goes for coats. Now, you might not be wanting to be taking a massive, great big coat. Don't forget something waterproof just in case there are showers and you do need to be going out in it. But just plan for the very different weather conditions of what you might actually need. And on footwear, I'll come on to something else a little bit later on, which could be proven to be very, very important. But the last bit on this, where are you going to sit? What are you going to eat off? Have you got a table in your van? If you've got a van with a locate table in it, you don't really need to be thinking about this because you've got a table in your van and one you can take outside. But if you've not, don't forget to put your table in your van and also don't forget your chairs. And additionally, blanket. Now I've already mentioned the plus passenger blanket, but if you didn't want to splash out on a, a more expensive blanket, then you can get cheapy ones like this. I think this is the third or fourth which we've had because yeah, the cheapy ones which you do get aren't going to be lasting you a long time, but they're just really useful, really handy to be taken down the beach so you can actually sit in a, in a bit more comfort or even at your campsite as well. It's nice just to sit on a blanket than it is on the grass. But moving on to kitchen, cooking and drinking. Now more than likely, you are going to be cooking in your van from time to time, or at least at your van if you don't want to cook physically inside. A lot of you might already have your two burner stove inside your camper van. But what about cooking outside? What about cooking away from the van, potentially at the beach or something? Well, this is where you're going to be needing a Kadak or something similar like that, your portable barbecue. Personally, I really do like the Kadak range. I've got the Carry Chef, which is the bigger one. And I also have the Safari Chef, which is the more portable one, which I can carry around in my van. It's got the small gas canisters and I can just easily take that down to the beach with a beach trolley, which is really, really useful. And it means it doesn't take up an awful lot of space. I've got somewhere to cook meals. I can also heat my hot water up in it as well. So it's just really, really useful. But what I love about the, these portable cooking things is you can get different accessories and attachments for them. So you can obviously get the, the pizza stone, which you've probably heard people talking about. And you can also get, which I think are actually my favorite, the tapas dishes. Now these tapas dishes are just little dishes, but you can cook perfect fried eggs in them. You can even cook pancakes. You can warm your beans up, cook your tomatoes in them. They're really, really versatile and ridiculously easy to clean, which certainly does please me. So don't forget your cooking device if you haven't got one actually fixed in your van. But if you do have one fixed in your van, it is essential that you check your gas before you go. If you're going off the beaten track in the middle of the sticks and you don't actually have a local gas supplier around, then you're going to be in trouble. So make sure you know how much gas you've got left. And if you do have a dwindling supply make sure you know where you can actually get that gas from it's definitely something worth considering i've known people before running out and they've got no idea where to go especially if they run out on a sunday and everything's shut just plan ahead make sure that you've checked that gas before you've gone you know how much you've got and you know if you run out where you're actually going to get some from but it doesn't stop there with your cooking because you've obviously got to remember your pots your pans utensils crockery mugs glasses you're obviously going to need to cook in something and you're also going to have to put that cooked thing on something so don't forget those easily forgotten i personally like the 12 piece melanin camper set which i actually got from tamar caravan center and this is your bowls your plates your dishes etc and for those people if you're in and around the locality of plymouth you might not realize that they do actually have a full stock shop of all sorts of different accessories for your camping and caravanning needs and with go outdoors closing down in Plymouth for refurbishment, not permanently. I'm pretty sure that they're actually gonna be really busy in the coming weeks and months as we're entering peak season. Why have they decided to do a refurb just as they're gonna be getting really busy? Baffles me. But another product which I also got is the collapsible washing up bowl. This is really useful, packs up really small and you can take it away. Now I know obviously camper vans have got sinks, your home sink has got a sink, but how many times do you actually use the metal of the sink and not a washing up bowl? Most people use a washing up bowl. So it's really good to have one which actually packs down quite small because it's obviously easier to carry around. And this also means you can carry your plates and dishes out of your van if you wanted to use the proper facilities. 
the amenities at one of the campsites because they've got obviously hot flowing water, which you don't have to be worried about heating up in your own van. Just a, another useful product. So if you've got it, don't forget it. Make sure you take it with you. And with that, you're washing up liquid, your scourers, your dishcloths, and towels for drying them afterwards. Don't forget the necessities, the things which you really need. And the food itself, why don't you take some basics? You might have planned to be going out and eating places or you're cooking your nice fancy recipes at night, but don't forget the essentials, your bread, your milk, tin food, things such as that. Even if the tin food, etc., is just gonna be a backup, it's really useful to have. But also one of the big things that people forget is your salt, your pepper, your vinegar, your tomato ketchup, your brown sauce and things like that. Make sure you pop them in your van so you've got them for when you need them. But this leads on to where you're actually gonna store these. Now, obviously with your milk and things like that, you're more than likely gonna be needing a fridge. But if you're staying off grid, is your leisure battery gonna be good enough to actually provide that power for the number of days which you're going away for? You do need to do your sums, do your calculations, and make sure that your battery is gonna provide that power for your fridge for that period of time. But hopefully you're gonna be on hookup anyway, which is ideal because you've just got the power in your van and your fridge is gonna be running nicely. But only if you remember your hookup cable. Why do people, how can people forget that? Don't forget your electric hookup cable. If you're gonna be going to a site and you need your hookup, don't forget your cable. You absolutely need that to be able to hook up. And if you are on hookup, then you are gonna be able to take your coffee machine from home or your kettle, your toaster, your George Foreman grill. Do people still have George Foreman grills? Do they, do they exist? You could be taking your air fryer, which I know a lot of people have got at the moment, really versatile for cooking all sorts of different things. So if you are going to a site such as that, remember, you can take them and you could actually use them on the hookup. Tea, coffee, sugar, don't forget these. If you want a brew when you get up on site, and you've forgotten to pack your tea bags and your coffee, you're not gonna be very happy. But if tea and coffee isn't your tipple, maybe it's a bottle of wine or possibly a bottle of beer or something like that. Don't forget your corkscrew. If you need to be taking that cork out of your bottle of wine, you've got your corkscrew. Again, it's not gonna be a very good start. And as I've said, a bottle opener, maybe you could pop down to St. Hostel Brewery's sample of Korev, which really is actually worth a crack. You could actually buy a key ring which has got a corkscrew on it. So if you've got your keys in it, you're always going to have a bottle opener and your keys, which is ideal. Or like I've got, I've got the reef flip flops and they've got the bottle opener underneath. The amount of times I've helped people out when we've been at a site, sat around a fire pit, or I've been a barbecue or something, and there's no bottle opener. Pop off my flip flop, crack open the bottle. Brilliant really really good but with all this gear we are rapidly running out of space but don't worry i do have some more ideas coming up a little bit later on but next coming on to safety and maintenance some things to actually keep you safe and also more van specific ones as well smoke alarm carbon monoxide alarm fire extinguisher and fire blanket why do some converters not include these these are absolute essentials to have in your van if you've not got these items in your van, then please do make it your next purchase. They really, really are important to keep your cells actually safe in the van. If there's a problem and you're asleep, you need to be alerted to it. So please do make it your next purchase. And personal safety, then you're gonna need your first aid kit and make sure that this is stocked. This is again, the Life Ventures Life Systems one again, had for many years, but over the years, I've had to maintain it. I've had to replace items which have been in it, plasters and things like that, which I've had to use. Make sure you put everything in it. So if anything happens, you've got the goods you need. And also make sure that you're putting in your painkillers, anti-itch tablets, bite creams, and like I've already mentioned, bug repellent. And really, it's a good idea to be keeping this in your van permanently. And also in your van, you should have your warning triangle just in case something goes wrong. Not a legal requirement in the UK. Obviously, it is on the continent, but you should have one anyway, along with high vis. So if anything goes wrong whilst you're in your van, it breaks down or something like that. You can be seen with your high vis. You can put the warning triangle out if you're breaking down on a road and you're quite close to potential danger. Just little things just to just to help you out make sure you carry them around with you. And of course, I've mentioned the torch before, and my choice is the Larry's, and this one is the, the Big Larry, and it's a really, really good torch. 
this is the big larry as i say i've got the little larry as well and it's much better than the torch on your phone this is perfect for campsites at night or should the worst happen and you break down or something happens in the darkness really good torch i again keep this in the van very useful now although not particularly essential because you obviously got your spur wheel on your van which you should do anyway uh, but i have my air inflator I've spoken about this before the ryobi air inflator and it is really good i've obviously got that so i can be pumping up the tires should anything happen to it i've obviously got the mountain bike tires which can be pumped up with that and also paddle boards and things like that this can actually be pumping up your paddle boards your air beds it's just something useful to have so if you've got an air pump don't forget to pack it make sure it is in your van but moving on to something else you are going to need and this is some form of entertainment and this could be as simple as your fire pit so don't forget your fire pit if you've got one and if you've not they're really cheap 10 to 20 quid on amazon will get you a nice little portable one perfectly it does the job but what better way is there in the evenings to spend time chatting around the fire pit with your friends talking about your adventures the day which you've got planned ahead taking your fire pit is so simple but yeah brilliant for the entertainment in the evenings and also if you've got kids or even if you've not got kids marshmallow stick yeah it doesn't have to be as as good as this one which you can actually put three marshmallows on brilliant you could just find a stick from the woods but if you do find a stick from the woods then you're going to need some kind of knife to to make it pointed so you can actually put the the marshmallow on it so don't be forgetting your pen knife tool to, to assist with that and also the lighting of the fire pit are you going to take your your own kindling wood for that you might want to buy it at the local garage as you're driving down but either way make sure it's on your list to actually buy and also the means of actually lighting that fire have you got your matches your lighter you need something to actually light it with so make sure that you've remembered to take that with you your children may need more though they may not want to be sitting around the campfire talking all night board and card games are really good as far as the board games are concerned you can get pocket board games ludo cluedo snakes and ladders there's there's all sorts of different things you can get for that and obviously you've got your card games you've got your uno your so some great games which i know personally my children absolutely love so make sure you pack those away but as the children get older they may need more than this they may be wanting the mobile phones and the tablets and you are going to need to keep those charged and i know it's a pretty much obvious one but don't forget your cables your cables and your charging devices to be able to charge those if you've not got your cables then you're going to be running out of foam juice very quickly now for daytime activities don't be forgetting to pack your buckets your spades your balls your paddle boards these are obviously optional items depending on where you're going if you're not going to the beach then you're not going to be needing them but if you are there's certainly some great things to have if you've got crabbing nets don't forget to take your crabbing nets and did you see the little video i did of i actually caught a starfish while i was crabbing at padstow crazy couldn't believe it but if you're going into the sea, something that could really prevent you from having a really bad day, and that is some beach shoes. Now, in the shallows of some beaches, you can get weaver fish, which are tiny, tiny little fish. But if you stand on them, the spike can actually go into your foot and is extremely painful. Now, you don't actually need beach shoes to prevent this from happening. If you actually shuffle your feet, then they won't sting you anyway because they're hiding down in the sand. And as you shuffle your feet along they just swim away if you've got them bring them it might prevent you from having a really painful experience and if all these things are not up your street don't forget to bring a book or a magazine and you can while away the hours while reading from your favorite author or finding out what you're going to buy next for your camper van these adventures though are taking up a lot of space so what options have we got what can we do well firstly you need to be utilizing the space the best you've got but please do be legal it is an offense to drive around with an unsecure load and i do see lots of pictures around the internet which just they are illegal vans doesn't matter how much you want to argue it it's illegal it is illegal to drive around in an unsecure load so you need to make sure that the goods which you're carrying are secured in place if some of your gear is being stored in between the front seats and the rear seat then please make sure that you keep this to the duvets and the pillows and the light goods which you've actually got if you've got anything in there of a substantial size which isn't secure in the event of a vehicle incident then 
this item is going to turn into a missile. If you're doing 70 mile an hour and you all of a sudden come to a sudden stop, the loose items are going to fly around inside that van. And if it hits somebody, then it's going to cause a lot of damage. So please think twice, make sure that your loads are actually secure. If you've got a rock and roll bed, then this is going to be a problem for you because the space behind the rock and roll bed is extremely limited. And that's why you do tend to see a lot of vans dangerously packed with everything in between those seats. Strap this stuff down, make sure that it is secure so it isn't going to move around in the event of an incident. Now, something that can be very, very helpful for storing away some items is storage boxes. Now, if you do have a rib bed, then there's certain size storage boxes which you can actually get, which you can fill up and pack on top of each other behind those rear seats. And it makes it not only much cleaner, but also much safer because it's locked away. Now, if you've got a Volkswagen Transporter camper van, then space is going to be limited. So you need to make the best of it, which you possibly can. Now, something which is useful is the vacuum bags, which you can get. So these bags are bags where you can put your soft items in, your pillowcases, your bedding, your clothing, and don't forget your clothing. Any item which can be packed down tight, you can put in these bags. And some of the ones which you can actually buy do actually come with a pump themselves, pretty similar to what you'd have for your, your air awning. This is the camper air awning and it comes with something similar to this. So essentially, you could use this, you can put it on the deflate side and use the pump and it sucks out the air and it just compresses the size of the, the bag which you've got and all the items in it and just makes it a lot easier, a lot smaller for carrying, packing things away. But if you're still requiring room, then a roof box could potentially be your answer. Now you do have to be careful if you've got a pop top because you will have a weight limit on that pop top of things which you can put in there, but you generally wouldn't be putting heavy items in there anyway. You might be putting, want to be putting your windbreak on there, which is another item you don't want to be forgetting. Maybe some small camping chairs, just to put some of the bulkier items out of the actual van and put them in the roof box. But weight is a factor, and also you might not actually have roof bars on your pop top anyway, because a lot of them don't actually come with them because of this strict weight, they don't want to be, and it can cause damage to your hinges if you've got your a lot of weight up there and your struts. So you do have to be careful with a roof box on a pop top, but there is another option, and that is the two lay cargo box. If you've got a tow bar on the back of your van, this is where you'd put the bike rack on the back, and then you put the cargo box on the top of that, and it's several hundred liters of storage. And the way it operates, you can still actually gain access to the rear of your vehicle. This is something which really should be considered. If you are lacking that room and space which you need, there are storage options. There's no excuse to leave a thing behind. The only thing that could mean that you're going to leave anything behind is the fact that you haven't planned. And this is potentially the biggest tip and the biggest bit of advice. And that is to write a list. That may seem obvious, but we all love a list, don't we? write a list but have this in a form where you can actually add to it so you go away you think you've planned the best you possibly have you've gone away and then you've realized oh i needed that i didn't take that with me i should have actually taken that well add it to your list and then next time you go away in your van you won't forget it next time because it's there on your list it's simple but effective but just looking around then i actually realized that i forgot to mention that when you're doing your cooking bits, you need your tools and things like that. And I've got these beauties, you might have seen them before, the VW California collection from Brizza. Perfect barbecuing tools. Not the cheapest around, but really good quality. And obviously VW products, I do like mine. So making a list, if I'd made a list of what to do in this video, then I wouldn't have had that. We all love a good list, don't we? It is, it's very simple, but very effective. And we also love the good weather. And as I mentioned, I did do a video on how to keep cool when it's really, really warm. And if you haven't seen that video already, you can watch that here. Thanks for watching, take care, and I hope to see you soon.